this rich man, this guy, they were talking about in Matthew, I mean, Matthew, Mark, chapter 10, verse 19. I think it's 19. 17, I mean. Uh, where is it start? Yeah, 17. Yeah, 17. This guy right here, like, what's his heart like? Jesus, like a surgeon, goes right in, like a doctor, and he just opens it up. That's coming up soon. So hang in there. Find out what this is about, what this is about. Hang in there and uh, go each thing. And I think once I could have gone just quickly over the surface, done this really quickly, but there's so much great stuff in each point that is made that Jesus shows us. And Jesus is a perfect doctor, perfect physician, psychologist, perfect psychiatrist, <laughs> counselor. Oh my goodness, this guy uh, had, was confronted by Jesus. He came to Jesus looking for answers. He got them. He didn't like the answers. He turned around and went, went away sorrowful. Really, really sad thing here. But uh, let's, let's pick it back up, or maybe I'll mention a little bit again. Uh, we talked about why do you call me good? Jesus said that. Some ideas there. Then, then what happened is he says, no one is good except God. You know the commandments. And he names six of the commandments, of the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, the main ones. There's 613 in the Old Testament. A lot of those are for priests and things like that. It wasn't for the whole nation of Israel. But a lot of them were. Like It was really a lot of laws and everything. And so oh, I love the law of God. So good. It's holy. It's good. It's righteous. It's, it's, it's to be desired. It's like sweeter than honey and honeycomb. The Bible talks about it. Let me go back into this story. Um, now, Matthew said, you know, uh, that if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. That's what Jesus said. Then he said, which Mark didn't mention it exactly this way. He's kind of giving highlights of it, not word for word exactly what, you know, what was exactly said. But you put them together, it really brings out the real beautiful picture of this. So uh, the guy was asking him, which, by the way, uh, I will say this, this young man, this whatever age he is, 19 or 20 something or whatever, um, that was a revealing question to me, and I, I can't remember if I brought that out when I went into this, but, you know, the deeper you get into the Bible, the deeper you find out new things. You think about it, why do you call which? Why do you say which ones? I, th I think I kind of know what, what his perspective was. Like, you know, I want to know which ones. Maybe I'm missing one. Maybe. But really, he should have said, like, he said, keep the commandments. He said, yes, all of them, he, all of them. Like maybe he was thinking of which one he's lacking, but why is he saying which? It's almost like, well, which, which should I do? What, should I do this one, that one? I don't know. The point is it should be all of them. A whole heart is going to do all. Whoever keeps the whole law and fails at one point has been, has breaks all of it, the Bible says in James. So, woo, really interesting question here. He's, then Jesus named them. Now, I think what Jesus is doing here, I mean, there's so much to say on this. I don't know how good it, like you'll go, oh, Gordon, it's too much. I can't get it, whatever. Try, try. You know, what he, he actually goes to the basic elementary school 101. These are the commandments. Now, he's a very important and very deep and really good. So I'm not saying that, but he says, you, wanna, you need to keep the commandments. If you want to have, by the way, if you want to have any relationship with God, you can't be a rebel doing whatever you want. You need to obey God and keep the law and keep the commandments. You need to do what he says. Anyone who says that I love God and is not obeying his commandments doesn't love God. Anyone who says I have faith in Jesus, which is good, you gotta have faith in Jesus. You can't get saved by keeping the law. It's faith in Jesus that gets you saved. But if you have faith in Jesus, you're gonna keep the law. <laughs> Faith without action and corresponding action and works is dead. I mean, like, it's, you're going to do it. And so, which this guy didn't want to do it. Oh, he, he didn't want to do it all. He wanted which ones, like some. We'll see that later. But the point is, you know, he go, Jesus went really basic with this guy. And he's revealing to him, I think, slowly what this guy is really like. And we're going to get into it real quick. Just, I want to mention these commandments. I could have just said, well, name six and go on. But let's talk about them. If you're younger, know these commandments. If you're older, know these commandments. <laughs> Live it. Do it. He named the second half. By the way, he started with, let's see, uh, 
sixth commandment. Yeah. Started with the six and went down. So you have, if you divide them up 10, you know, four of them in the very beginning are about God. He never mentioned any of these. I think, you know, it's easier to find out what you're really like if you find out how you treat others. Because a lot of people can say, oh, God's first in my life. Oh, I love God and I don't can't take his name in vain and keep the Sabbath or whatever. These different laws about God. He said, oh, yeah, 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 God is first. But then how do you treat others? That's going to show you how much you really do the first four. You have no other gods before me and no image and all that. God should be first when that's why it's in first group. And then he goes into the second group that he talks about. He says, don't murder. Remember, Jesus said, if you're angry, or if you have hatred in your heart and all that, then you're a murderer in God's sight. If you're really angry with people, and uh, you need to get all that out. But let's just make it simple, like he did with this guy. Do not murder. He, was, he never murdered. Do not commit adultery. He never, he never committed adultery. Do not steal. Never stole from anyone. Do not give false testimony. He didn't go to court or speak lying, lies about others. Lying is just hated by God, by the way. Do not defraud. We'll talk about that a little bit. And he takes a, Jesus mentioned this one, number five, and puts it at the bottom. Honor your father and mother. Not sure why, but he puts it down here. But he, he kind of names them sort of in order. Like, boom, boom, that's an order, that's an order, that's an order, that's an order. This one right here, uh, it says it in the book of Leviticus, Numbers, or one of the verses um, literally says, don't defraud your neighbor, but not in the Ten Commandments. But defraud means... I want to explain that a little bit, is kind of cheating on your neighbor or, or lying about him. You're, you're kind of defrauding him. You're doing something against him. Maybe you want something from him or something. You're, you know, you're cheating him somehow. And that's a type of lying. That's also a type of stealing. So the eighth, ninth, and tenth commandments are mentioned there. He mentioned the eighth commandment, don't steal. I hope this guy, I don't think he ever took anybody's money. That's why he got rich. Some people get rich because they take other people's money. But he didn't do that, so he, he checked it off, checked it off like a checklist. You know, he did all these things. Jesus is really taking this guy and getting him to think. And you need to think about your life. Are you doing these things? So, you know, so these are the, these are the commandments. He said, you know, we'll go into the next thing. Hey, I'll just say it. He said, I've kept these from my youth. From my youth. Now, does that mean like if this is his youth here? from like one to and you become sort of a man at age 13 12 13 13 where they have a bar, bar mitzvah a special ceremony is come now called the son of the commandments son of the law hmm so has he kept it from his youth meaning from after he became a young man and that day you're 13 you're becoming a man you became a man you got to sit with the men in the synagogue and all that from that from the youth or did he say from a little boy, from all his life he's kept these? You know, I'm not sure which. But if it's from his youth, uh, it could be from that time that he became a son of the commandments. He really was held accountable and really, you know, living the commandments out. Now, one last thing. I hope this isn't going too long. Just hang in there. Maybe you need to stop it, pick it back up later. I'm trying to keep it like down. But... I want to go into it. Just please stay with me. This is so good. The purpose of the law. This is kind of helpful for this teaching, and it'll definitely be mentioned throughout the scriptures in the New Testament later. What are the purposes of God's law? Have you ever thought about that? Why did God give us laws? He gave us laws, and, and, his, and some of it is so obvious. Everybody knows that. But he puts it literally written by his finger, by the way, with Moses, and he puts it on tablets, and it's written down now. It's really important to read this, these laws, and know the Bible. Um, I love the Old Testament and all. Um, but the purposes of the law are, I have eight reasons. There's probably more, but these are the big ones, I think. Number one, it's kind of foundation to your fellowship with God. You know, like I said before, how can you uh, walk together with God and be in fellowship with Him if you're stealing, murdering, killing, you know, like committing adultery and all that? You're not walking with fellowship with God. And... If anytime you do sin and I have sinned, you know, breaking God's laws, I've, I've broken his commandments before, I do feel that lack of fellowship with God at that point. It's like, oh, I don't feel his presence. I don't have that, that close relationship. Sin pushes you back away from God. That doesn't mean you're 
he kicks you out and say, no, you're not going to be with me if you're a Christian in heaven. Nah, it's, it's not like that. But you do cut off a relationship. If you're a child in here and you do something against your parent, it's kind of a wedge there. It's something parents are not happy with you. You can feel that that sad fellowship is kind of cut off there. You don't have a really sweet relationship right now. You have a relationship. You just don't have fellowship. You don't have it's it's you don't have a good thing going between each other you need to get it right say you're sorry you know get even if you have to get punished or disciplined or something then you feel you're in right standing is great that's the sin is horrible <laughs> all right so foundation and fellowship of god another one is it set apart the law in the old testament hebrew scriptures first five books of the bible particularly exodus uh through deuteronomy exodus leviticus and deuteronomy especially set apart the Jewish nation from the others, from all the other nations. God gave them a special law for them. Okay. No, number three, I'll stay, I'll try and go quicker instead of, I could talk about each one of these for a while because there's so much wonderful stuff in them, you know, about the points. To protect, to protect general safety. Purpose of laws, obviously, the rules are to protect general safety. What if we didn't have laws and rules in, in school or at home or on the road? No laws on the road. Speeding and hit pedestrian. <laughs> like, just do whatever you want. Turn when you ever want. Like, it would be chaos. So law does bring order. And it brings general safety. You know, the laws of God in the Old Testament was to bring safety to people. And it helps secure their rights. People have rights. Human rights, you know, dignity. Uh, human rights, life, and, and not murder and all that. And it also helped lead respect for God and the people. So I think what I'm going to do just real quick, um, as I think about it, I think I'm going to take these words and kind of emphasize them. So the one was the fellowship with God. That was one. Number two was um, it set them apart from the other nations. The law of God was given to that nation. So a lot of the nations didn't have to do those. By the way, Christians aren't under the Jewish law, which well, some of it we are, but I'll go into that some other time. To protect, to keep safety and rights, and especially this one, respect for God and people. The first four uh, commandments are respect to God. Don't have any uh, other gods because I'm God and it's insulting to have other gods, idols and all. Second one is don't take and make me into some likeness, squeeze me into a box of some image. I'm way beyond that. So that's insulting. You're not respecting me because I'm beyond images. Three is don't take his name in vain. That's respecting his name. Don't say just Yahweh or Lord or God or something like, oh my God, people say that OMG. I no, no. Get that out of your mind and heart and no it's kind of making his name or his title empty meaningless you're just saying it you know people say hallelujah and they're not really saying praise ye the lord yah is god's name on and on stealing takes his name in vain by the way the scripture teaches i mean there's a lot and then the fourth one is keep the sabbath at that point he definitely want to set a day set apart so that they can remember him and think about him and, and worship him on that particular day. That's that's respect to God. And all the other commandments, like we mentioned before, murder, committing adultery, stealing, and not bearing false witness, that's respecting others. It's respecting their life, that means, like, don't murder them. Uh, let's go back to those. Do not commit adultery. Respect your uh, husband's woman and uh, woman's man. Respect their marriage. Stay out of it. Next one is don't steal. Respect the property of other people. Don't give uh, false testimony. Respect the dignity of the person when you're actually in court and you're telling a false testimony about him. You're lying about your neighbor or something. That's respecting the real core of that guy, the character of that guy. I mean, if you don't do it, you're not respecting that, that character. Do not defraud. Don't cheat others and all. You know, that's awful. And, and trick others. Honor your father and mother. What is that? Respect your father and mother. <laughs> Even if they've blown it a lot and they're not doing well, you respect their office. Respect them. You have to respect, you have to respect what everybody does. But uh, there it is. To help govern. Let me go a little faster. And you're saying, yay! No. <laughs> to help govern relationships in society. The law helped lead relationships. 
and society as a whole. It's kind of a, these kind of go together, but you know, kind of say it a different way. Um, it did require internal and obedience. By the way, a lot of people don't get that thing because outward, like this guy was, this, this rich man was doing it outwardly, but it required an internal uh, uh, obedience. But it was like a tutor uh, for elementary children. Now that's a deep statement. Let me just say it quickly and say if I could see it in one sentence or two. New Testament teaches Galatians 3, chapter 4. Oh, it's wonderful verses right here. But here it is. The Old Testament law was kind of teaching elementary children, even adults, you know, how you should live with the, each other. And there's depth to it. I'm not saying it's surfacy. But it really couldn't change the person's heart and life deeply. It, you could do some reformation. You could reform and change someone. But it really doesn't go in and make you a law giver. I mean, not law giver, but a law um, abider, uh, obedience to the law. It really is, is tutoring, like a tutor with elementary kids. And when you grow up into Christ and you become not just a child of God, but a son and daughter, and you really grow into maturity, you'll obey the whole law. The spirit of the law is in you and you really get it. So it's kind of good, just like children, if you're a child, you're told, don't do this, don't do that, do this and do that. You need that for a good while until absolutely you get to a point where you don't have to be told not to do it or what to do because you're mature enough to know. All right, so there's a lot to that. I'm not going to go too much on that. But this is really saying that there's a maturity in Christ as sons and daughters of God that takes you out of the elementary age thing. All right, but the law was for that purpose. But there is, is a maturity into the love of God that really fulfills all that and takes you away more than what the law says, the Old Testament. It's like a mirror. The, the Word of God is, uh, the law is like a mirror showing what needs to change, your needs. So, uh, you know, a mirror kind of tells you, oh, my hair's out of place, so oh, I've got a smudge on my face, I need to do this or whatever. The law, when you look at the read the law, it tells you, oh, you're not doing that. You should be doing this. I thought, oh, I didn't know that. The law tell, it gives, it's like a mirror. And the Bible says it, by the way, in James chapter 1. But anyway, it also gives you knowledge of sin and yourself. It tells you what sin is. It's the not, it law is the, it shows you what sin is. The Bible says that. The knowledge of sin it comes when you get the law of God telling you. It also, like I said, tells you what you're really like. The more you, the deeper you get into the law of God and the word of God and all, the more you realize how, what you're really like. And there's things inside and things you're doing that you didn't even know was wrong, like me, you know, and then you get, whoa, it's like a lot. And then also, this is a big one. The Bible really teaches this very clearly. It makes sense. The law of God was to show everybody the need of a savior because you can't keep the law perfectly. You break it a lot. It helps you generally, that word general up here, but you really need a savior, and that's where Jesus came in. He came to fulfill the law, and also you need him and all that. Now, by the way, in the law, law system, they had sacrifices of animals. They had you know, blood sacrifices for all the times they, they messed up and they didn't do right and they sinned. Then God, they knew they kept sinning and they kept breaking the law. Well, what's, what's our, what do we do? You know, how do we get out of that? That's when Jesus came. 4,000 years later, he came and he, he proved to people for 1,500 years when Moses came and gave the law, he proved to people, the Israel, the, that nation and everybody in the world, you can't keep the law without a savior. And you need a savior to take all the sins that you've done against the law to be able to get forgiven by all those sins. That's where you need a savior. So the law helps prove that. It was given for that purpose. Some of it reveals also the moral nature, the moral nature and character of God himself. The law kind of tells you what type of God he is. And he's one that's righteous. He's one that's just. He's one that does not like sin, like lying and all those things. You know, so it really kind of reveals him as well. Parts of it doesn't reveal him, but most of it does. It really is good. That's it. I better hit it quick. God bless you. Love you. Uh, come back and go into the next section. It gets better and better. God bless.